I've been thinking a lot about a particular question lately. How does musical taste work? We all know certain tunes that resonate well with our personality while others obviously don't. It's mostly dependent on your personal history, how much you were exposed to certain artists or music as a whole. If you had a favorite song as a kid that felt magical to you, you probably feel the nostalgia as you relive the memories your brain has associated with those musical patterns. Or you started to rebel in your development as a teenager in order to grow your own identity through your old beliefs and worldviews in the trash and picked up the norms and values of your peer group, which might mean a radical shift in your perspective in all of life started to take place. Your sense of what's good and bad music hasn't been unaffected by that for sure. Chances are your group of friends had an underlying codex to like and dislike certain musical styles, which you adapted unconsciously to fit in. Whether you went with or against the grain in your case, that's pretty much the foundation on which you grew your musical taste on. Now here's an interesting question. Can someone have, in a literary sense, a good or bad taste in music? I'd argue yes, you can, but it's not the choice of music that counts, but the listener himself. The more you listen to, deeply experience and observe music, the better you understand the fine differences hidden in the song as layers upon layers of sounds open up to your understanding. Then you eventually get so used to the sound of the song, you stop paying that much of attention anymore and it even becomes really hard or uncomfortable to stay as aware while observing the music as you were when you first listened to the song. Now every time you listen to a new piece of music, your brain gets a little faster in understanding what's going on and putting a label like an emotion or memory on it. Which experience we ultimately like or don't is obviously completely subjective and therefore irrelevant to my point here. But in which depth and how fine-tuned we are able to experience music can be considered in some form or another as to have a good or bad musical taste. To bring home this point, here is my favorite little analogy regarding this topic. Why is the average person unable to taste the difference between a high quality wine and a really cheap one once they test it blindfolded? And why do wine lovers insist on the notion that quality makes a huge difference? Because a wine expert literally has trained his brain and especially his taste buds to experience and categorize the finest differences in taste while you and me probably haven't. Now it gets interesting. It doesn't matter which wine they drank to acquire the skill, it's only the exposure of the experience itself that makes the difference. Just knowing which wine you like and which you don't does not make you an expert, but being able to understand and appreciate each wine for its uniqueness makes the subtle but important difference. Do you see where my point is heading? To find or argue about the quality of certain styles of music and differences in taste becomes completely pointless when it's in a non-judgmental way, the quality of the listener that counts. Think about it. The song doesn't change, no matter who listens to it or how often. Only the perception has changed over time, individually, from person to person. I'm not saying that music can't be of higher or lower quality, effort or complexity, but taking that perspective as your base to build your subjective musical taste on, unfortunately leads you nowhere. Every style has its own strengths and weaknesses to learn from. 
Pop music is not complex, but really easy to enjoy. Free jazz is really complex and is hard to truly enjoy because it sounds pretty messy if you don't understand yet how to enjoy listening to it. By narrowing down your taste of music on only the artists that are familiar to you, you take away the possibility of getting inspired by other genres. I've made that exact mistake and just recently realized that I've trapped myself in a really specific and small niche of music and now I find it really hard to truly enjoy other styles of music. If you're curious, the style I've been obsessed about is acoustic hard rock. Yes! You might say, what's the point of all this? What's the practical value for me? Well, as a musician, you may have realized that the kind of ear tuning I've been talking about is one of the most critical tools you can develop, because once you are able to exactly identify what the musician you are listening to is playing and how the piece of music is written, you can translate it one by one to your own craft, effortlessly and by intuition. Listen to your favorite tune over and over again and try to identify what notes are played by which instrument in which way. But be aware of the pitfall I have fallen into and set your highest priority on understanding how to enjoy the artist you are listening to rather than on understanding how the music itself was made. As it is with most parts of reality, things can become really uncomfortable once you look at them too closely. I bet you would find it a little disturbing to know exactly the way your favorite kind of meat was fabricated before it was served on your plate. Just keep that perspective in mind while you go on. Now, if you still want to know how the songs are made that you feel are in inspiring you, then don't use any chords, tabs, lyrics or music sheets created by someone else to understand the work that was put into creating the music. Keep your focus on deep observation, a skill that few people actually learn in our modern times because life has become full of comfort and distractions for most of us making it increasingly harder to concentrate on one task only and this may seem like a counterintuitive, even impossible task at first that I'm giving you here, but you realize pretty quickly either one of two things. A. It's just a matter of time to learn the skill like every other thing in life. Or B. You really need to work on your patience, don't you? <laughs> As an untrained listener, your mind barely scratches the surface of what's actually put into a song. And don't get me wrong here, it has a lot of advantages to keep it at that level and only listen to music in the car stereo on your way to work as a comfortable background noise or to move your body to when you are standing on the dance floor. You still feel the magic when you discover a new song. You are a lot less judgmental about differences between sounds because you don't instantly understand when something about a song is poorly written or played. It just feels good or bad to you. This form of open-mindedness where you don't overanalyze every sound you hear is called the beginner's mindset and is the state of mind which you should ultimately choose to return to once you've had some years of practice because it opens up the opportunity for you to enjoy every style of music without preconceptions regardless of your initial reaction to like or dislike them. You start to get a big picture understanding where there's no room for judgments of any kind. Lastly, please check for yourself how my perspective may be true or false for you. Translate it to areas of your own life that relate deeper to you and see if there are any similarities to what I'm talking about. With that said, please share your comment down below and consider subscribing if you want to watch future content. 
I'm the Aberist. Until next time, take care.